Tonight, we will be learning about how to cook cut liver. The first thing that we need is chicken fat. Right now, I have put in one full pound. These are, these are, actually, what you will see next will be a half of a pound of chicken fat. As you can see, it has a beautiful color and texture. This is genuine kosher empire chicken fat. There we go. Unrendered. So this is unrendered. This is becoming rendered. This is the process of rendering chicken fat. This is according to an ancient Jewish tradition, ancient story that's told, passed down from generation to generation amongst the rabbis and the elders of the villages. It's actually the wives. They're the ones that usually render the chicken fat. So, it's the red-handled shears or scissors. These things can cut through a lot of items, including plastic bags, such as this one. And now, as you see, this is pretty much solid, frozen fat. This is nothing more. This is what keeps the chicken warm at night. And has promoted such a warm and loving and mutually beneficial relationship between humans and poultry over many millennia. See, it's because this chicken fat is a source of health. Right now, as you can see, it's about 10, 20 p.m. Yeah, so I think that right now we just get to watch this uh, kind of fizzle away into greasiness and, and once the once the oil once the the fat has become rendered uh, or liquefied, then we will have the opportunity to um, make gribnets, which is essentially fried onions. And um and we are making schmaltz. In a frying pan on low heat, we must stir frequently. Most of the fat will slowly melt down. We will discard the solids. And the rendered fat is schmaltz. Very helpful tool, which helps to uh, keep chicken fat from splattering all over. Because it does say that we must stir frequently. You get a, a long handled stir, longer handled, and you protect. Be very protective. Oh, see, here's the old fat. Oh, schmaltz. New fat, still frozen inside. Old. Getting down to the schmaltz. New fat. It's very important to stir this. So you get nice, fresh, unfried fats there. And we become schmaltz. <laughs> sense of the quality of the livers you've chosen when you get to this stage you can see the ooze factor um, mm -hmm. and the consistency you also start to see the color start to change a little bit um, and get a sense of the richness of the schmaltz that has been passed down the door for door from Amen. generation to generation and know how delightful this will truly be in just a matter of hours. The juice of the liver and the schmaltz and then the onions and the schmaltz becoming dark and toasty. Um, would you like to sing the Shehekianu in a cantorial style? <laughs> Over our, our uh, top liver? Sure. Uh, we'll use um, Rejoicing in Shabbat and the Holidays to lead us in our Shehekianu um, to capture the blessing of the moment, um, two brothers sharing their mother's recipe um, of chopped liver.
So ethereal. You don't want to cook them meat in the mother's milk. That's true. These eggs are fresh. So we've diverged from the recipe and we are making quote unquote poached eggs. These are poached in the um, <laughs> in the schmaltz. Yep, yellow is still running. So it should definitely go a few more minutes. Mm -hmm. Probably two to three. You have to catch the aroma. Meanwhile, over here, we've decided to turn the onions back on uh, just to get them that extra notch browner and a little bit crisper. Mm -hmm. uh, really, we find that it really enhances the texture. And the overall gestalt. Right. Joie de vivre of the experience. And the chicken liver. Right. Yeah. And in the test kitchen we've found that people are more prone to eat more of the chicken liver with more fully cooked onions. onions. In fact, but I think we'll add some fresh onions too. Sweet Jesus. Towards the end, yeah. We don't want anybody leaving with pretty breath. Okay, these are some fresh onions that are going to go in, um, and these are the onions that have already been cooked. Oh, they already have some eggs on them. This is what happened to our eggs. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, first I added some <coughs> some mushroom sauce, uh, no, mushroom powder, shiitake powder, just for flavor and thickening agent. Um, so, those are livers. Yesterday they looked so fresh and um, mm. now they've, they've firmed up a bit. So now we're just going to dump and blow. Let's do half. This is called the dump and blow. Okay. And we're just going to dump. Oh, Jesus Christ. Blow. And it starts developing into a ball and rolling around. That's when you can take her out. You can see it's got a nice smooth texture. It's gathered into a ball. We're going to put this into a, another bowl and then do the second half. I'll try to hold on to it with my finger. Hot. Hot. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, always be very careful with the blade. This time, we're taking the small glass bowl that we've had in the refrigerator overnight of schmaltz, gribnets, um, schmaltz coddled poached eggs, and our schmaltz uh, cooked onions. We're just going to do half in the Cuisinart for, okay. for a quick, smooth dump and blow. And you can really get a sense of the quality of the egg by the bright color and, and mm -hmm. the beautiful texture and consistency. I think it's really melded with the chicken finished product. It's got about the consistency of moist clay. In fact, little kids can make sculptures out of it. But you would not want to waste. Mm -hmm. Right now I'm building Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Little Lincoln, right in here somewhere. I see his beard. Mm -hmm. See that? It's got. It's great for giving the texture of hair on your sculpture. Mm -hmm. Delish. <laughs> One way to really measure the quality of your final product is by getting a sense of the sound as you're, um, you know, doing the final twist of the spoon. If we could just get a close-up sample of that. 